Hello friends and welcome back to Recap TV. Today I am going to explain a movie called Girl in the Basement. This movie is based on true events. The film starts with a very intense scene where we see a man driving a car and in the back seat we see a woman and a girl on her lap. The girl seems to be having difficulties in breathing and they are heading to the hospital. Sometime later, they finally arrive at the hospital and while carrying the girl inside, the man warns the woman to keep her mouth shut and not to say a word. They get inside the hospital and ask for help. The nurses quickly take the girl for treatment while the woman watches from the window. The scene then changes, we are taken 20 years back into the past and we see a family eating at a table. In the family are husband and wife Dawn and Rini and their two daughters, Amy and Sarah. Sarah says she is going to a campfire party but Dawn doesn't allow her to go because she didn't ask him for permission and he commands her to go in her room. Sarah is rebellious and she sneaks out from the house. Her motorcycle riding boyfriend Chris has come to pick her up. They share a kiss and then head to the party. They enjoy the party and spend some time with each other in the fields. Chris plays the guitar and sings a song for Sarah. Then he confesses his love for her and she also says that she reciprocates the same. Meanwhile back at home, Rini, unknown to the fact that Sarah is not in her room, tries to console her daughter from behind the door. But when an angry Dawn comes and opens her room with the keys, only to find out that Sarah has sneaked out from the window. Dawn seems extremely pissed at his daughter. In the next morning, Dawn is sitting at the front door and when Sarah comes home, he notices Chris. Sarah tries to enter the house from the back door but Dawn calmly asks her to come from the front. But when she tries to enter, he angrily demands answers from Sarah. Dawn asks her that when did he give her the permission to date someone. To which she replies that's none of his business and tells him that the day she turns 18, she's gonna leave and run away. After hearing that, he screams at her and reminds her that she will have to obey his rules as long as she lives in his house. Rini comes and stops the argument. Sarah quickly runs into her room. Sometime later, Amy comes to check on her and they talk. Amy advises Sarah not to argue with Dawn. Sarah says he's crazy and somebody has to stand up to him. While the girls are talking, their mother Rini also joins the conversation. Sarah reveals her plans to move out on her own when she becomes 18. She tells Amy and Rini that she will start from Florida and travel the world. As they speak, Dawn also overhears the conversation. Dawn, upon hearing their conversation, makes some evil plans. He starts by cleaning and preparing a bomb shelter in their basement, in which he intends to lock Sarah so she can't leave him. Three months later, Sarah has now completed her graduation and her 18th birthday is also very close. One day, Dawn is trimming some garden trees and Sarah is speaking with Chris on the phone. Rini comes and asks Sarah about Dawn. Sarah tells her that he's in the garden. Rini says she is worried about him because lately these days he is spending too much time in the basement. She wants to know what he does down there. To which Sarah replies that she should go herself and check the place out. Rini tells her that Dawn says there are rats down there and she hates rats. That's why she wouldn't go down there. Rini tells her that she is going for shopping and invites Sarah to come with her. But Sarah denies. She says she can't come with her because she is talking to her boyfriend Chris. Rini leaves with her car and now there is only Dawn and Sarah in the house and Dawn is about to do something which will change Sarah's life forever. He asks Sarah to help him move some stuff. Sarah hangs up the phone and goes to help him. They move a bucket inside the basement. He then locks her inside and leaves. Sarah is completely shocked by what her father just did. She tries to open the door with the keypad but when she enters a wrong code, the lights go off. The place gets dark. She searches the bucket. It's full of clothes and other stuff. There's also a flashlight for her. She screams in the vent for help but unfortunately, Dawn hears her and covers the vent up with some stuff and leaves. She is now literally trapped inside a bomb shelter and it is also completely soundproof. Night falls and Rini and Amy who thought Sarah went to see a friend have now started to become worried about her because she didn't came back and hasn't even called them yet. Rini wants to call the cops but Don reassures her. He tells her that she'll be back in the morning and they should now go to sleep. Rini asks Amy to call Chris and leaves. Day 1 ends with many many more to come. Day 2 Sarah is living like a caged animal. She uses a pot to urinate. The keypad in the door has three tries before shutting down the room's lights and air circulation. Day 4 Sarah uses every moment to scream for help through the vent. When Dawn comes to check on her, she flanks him and tries to run outside but only to be stopped by another door. Dawn drags her inside the room and tells her that this is the consequence for her own actions and she should have listened to him. Sarah begs him to let her out 
but he says that is something he can't do. He tells her that she gets the air, food, clothes only if he wants. And she can also have blankets and books but only if he says. Everything she gets now and every privilege she will have to earn these things from now on. Then he asks her if she understands or not. She doesn't reply anything. In return, Don slaps her and then he rapes his own daughter and leaves. Back in the house, Rini has called the cops and she tells the officer that Sarah wouldn't just leave like this and something might have happened to her. Don comes and persuades the officer to think that she has run away from home. He also tells him about their plans to start from Florida and travel the 50 states when she becomes 18. Rini says that it was not her plan, it was just a dream, plus she hasn't had her birthday yet and she wouldn't just leave like this without even saying goodbye to her. The officer tells her that Sarah soon will turn 18 and she has the right to go to any place as she pleases and he has seen these kind of cases. There's nothing much they can do about it. It is day 7. Sarah is bruised and battered. To get herself through the trauma she's experiencing, she thinks about Chris and the night they spent together. We get to see a conversation. She tells him about her plans to leave when she turns 18. Chris tells her that he loves her and wherever she goes, he will also join her. They both make a plan to travel the world in the motorcycle. Sarah wants a pink helmet and Chris agrees. The scene changes and ironically, Chris shows up with his motorcycle. He also brought the pink helmet which he promised to Sarah. He questions Dawn about where Sarah is and asks if she has called them yet. But Dawn lies to him. He says that she ran off with another man named Stevie. He tells him that she always talked about leaving the house with Stevie. Upon hearing this, a heartbroken Chris lives with the helmet he brought for Sarah. 21 days have passed and today is Sarah's birthday. Dawn goes downstairs. He gives her a birthday cake. He gives her a red dress as a birthday gift and forces her to put it and asks her what she wants. Sarah says she wants to be released, to which he says that it is too early. Then she asks for a TV, to which he says that she has to earn it. Then she asks for a clock and he agrees to that. And when she calls him dad, he commands her to call him Don from now on. Then he asks her to come closer and probably she gets raped again. Day 38. Sarah makes a plan to kill Don with the lid of a beef can. She makes a weapon from the can lid attached to some wood and waits for him to come down. When he comes down, she is wearing the same red dress. When he gets closer, she attacks him, but he easily avoids the attack and beats her and probably rapes her again. Fast forward from day 38 to day 354. Sarah seems to be pregnant with her father's child. She uses a nursing book to prepare for the baby. Suddenly, she feels extreme pain and delivers her baby with no medical assistance or proper medical hygiene. She has given birth to a girl. She names the baby Marie. Four years later, Sarah is pregnant again and she is raising a daughter. Don has come to visit them. He has also provided them with some basic necessities such as a table, cupboards, mattress, etc. Sarah seems calmed down and talks with Don, even offering him tea. Don says he has got a promotion and tells that he is going to have a new office. Murray calls him dad and shows him a drawing she made. He seems happy. Sarah tells him that soon there's gonna be three of them here and asks him whether he could release them to which he responds angrily and goes upstairs for dinner. While having dinner, Rini argues with Don. She says she wants to hire a private investigator because Don never tried hard to find Sarah. He tells her that they have already spent more than $5,000 in Florida to search for her and he is not going to spend any more money on her. He tells her to move on and focus on Amy. He screams breaks some plates and leaves. He later provides Sarah and Marie with a TV as a Christmas present. Sarah is very happy because finally she got a TV. Year 7. Sarah has given birth to a son named Michael and they all are living in the basement. Murray seems to be sick and having difficulties in breathing. Don provides some pills but Sarah says they are not for kids and she does not know what the dosage would be. She demands Murray needs a doctor but Don just leaves. The next day, Chris meets with Amy. He says he's still looking for Sarah and shares with Amy the lies he heard from Don about Sarah running away with Stevie. Amy admits that her father has been abusive with her mother and thinks that he did something to her sister. Later that day, she confronts Don and accuses him of doing something to Sarah. Rini still wants to go to a private investigator which sets Don off. They argue and Don drops his basement keys. Amy picks them up and snoops around the basement, only to be caught by an aggressive Don. Meanwhile, down in the basement, Sarah plays with her kids. Time passes and Sarah gives birth to her third baby, a boy. She named him Thomas. She tells Don that there is no room here for a third child and convinces him to leave the baby for Rini to raise him. Don agrees and on the next day, he puts the baby in the doorstep with a note from Sarah asking her to take care of her newborn baby. Rini bursts out from tears when she finds the baby and the note. She takes the baby and goes inside. 
but she misses a smaller note that Sarah left asking her to call the police because she is stabbed in the basement. Unfortunately, Don gets hold of the smaller note. He goes into the basement, takes out his rage on Sarah and leaves. Year 14 Murray and Michael have grown up. Don now has his eyes on a teen Murray. Sarah requests him to leave her alone and tells him that she's just a kid. The kids also have social anxiety problem from being locked in a basement bunker their whole lives. They do not understand how horrible the situation they are really in. 17 years have passed. It's raining outside. Rini has some bonding time with grandson Thomas. Sarah is pregnant again and sometime later they notice a leak in the ceiling and start digging their way out with a spoon. Sarah spends all night digging. The hole leads to the front yard and she flashes a light signaling the neighbor for help. The neighbor notices the light. He goes to the front door and informs Don. Don says that everything is fine and sends the neighbor back. Then he goes downstairs and takes out his rage by brutally beating his pregnant daughter, causing her to miscarry. 18 years in captivity. Don fills Sarah in about her other son Thomas living just above them. He tells her that Thomas is getting big and strong day by day and he wants to play football from next year in addition to baseball. Michael says he also wishes to play baseball. Don says it all depends on how their mother behaves and turns Murray and Michael against Sarah. Later that day, they demand to be let out and Sarah can't take it. She freaks out and collapses on the floor, crying. She thinks of her boyfriend Christopher and the love he showed her. The kids realize their mistake and clean all the mess. When Sarah wakes up, she finally tells her children the truth about Don and that Rini is her mother and Don's wife and she is his daughter. The kids understandably are overwhelmed. Murray is asthmatic and has trouble breathing due to limited air supply in the basement. 19 years in captivity. Don comes down to the basement and has an argument with Sarah about rationing food. Michael gets angry and tries to beat up Don, but that only makes him angrier. He tells Michael that Thomas is younger than him but is more bigger and stronger than him. Above ground, Don isn't doing so great either. He constantly fights with his wife, is fired from his job and his house is in foreclosure. He is tired of taking care of Sarah and the kids and tries to kill them when they are sleeping. He keeps his car on and funnels carbon monoxide into the basement's air vents with a hose. Thomas catches Don in the garage and wonders what his grandfather is doing. Don tells him he is just checking his car. After Thomas leaves, Don has a change of heart and doesn't kill them. He goes to the basement to check on them and we see that they are okay and still sleeping. 20 years. Murray has an asthma attack so bad that she needs medical attention. Sarah begs Don to take them to the hospital, but he denies. But when she calls him dad, he has a change of heart and agrees to take Murray to the hospital. But he only allows Sarah to come with him and Michael stays in the basement. After 20 years, Sarah finally comes upstairs and has an emotional breakdown, but she quickly gets a hold of herself and then rushes Murray to the ER. It is the same scene we saw at the start of the film. Doctors are able to save Murray. A concerned doctor asks about Murray's medical history and also gives Don a form to fill. Sarah asks Don to go to the bathroom, but Don refuses to let her go. She spills water on Don's paperwork and makes her way to get help while he gets a new form. Sarah tells the doctor everything. Don is arrested and put away for life. Michael is also rescued from the basement. Rini is horrified to learn the truth about what happened to her daughter at her husband's hand in her own house. The family all move in together. Chris also shows up and gives Sarah the pink helmet which he promised to her and was holding on to for all those years. They talk about their teenage plans for the future. Chris apologizes for not trying harder to find Sarah. Then they go for a ride together. The movie ends with that being said. If you enjoyed the presentation, make sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications by pressing the bell icon. So with that being said, I bid you farewell and will see you guys in the next video. Bye and take care.